if I could um, tell any juniors who do listen to this, don't lose hope, be persistent. Um, I actually do have um, some show and tell. I actually have something I wanted to, to, to show oh, <laughs> any yeah. of you juniors who want to watch, but um, I don't know if you can see this. But um, yeah. so this is my visitor's pass to Pixar. Okay. Hey. Hey. <laughs> How are you, mate? Good morning. Morning. Good morning. <laughs> what time is it there? Like eight o'clock? It's it? yeah, eight a.m. So I'm still kind of like, oh, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Jay Jay Ross. Um, I'm originally from the Philippines, so I'm Filipino. Hey. Um, I call Australia home, and I currently live in Vancouver, in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> So you'll, you'll find uh, the theme of a lot of people who we've interviewed. Uh, we go where the work is and we, we travel and we're transient and we travel so much for this art form that we love to do. Um, so I'll, I'll preface by saying I didn't think I'd ever become an animator. I never thought I could be an animator. Okay. But one thing after the other kind of happened in my life that sort of led me down this path of animation. Um, I thought I'd be a game designer. I thought I'd be building games, doing coding, because uh, coming from the Philippines, I, I guess really aspirations could be maybe marketing, advertising, that's kind of maybe, maybe graphic design. That's maybe the most of your aspirations you could ever really get into, into like the creative world. Um, and then my, I grew up all around the world because every two, three years, my parents would move. So I've been very, very lucky to kind of be exposed to all these different cultures. Um, so I was born in the Philippines, but a year after my, my brother was born, um, we moved to New Zealand. So my very first accent learning English was Kiwi. So I had a very, very different accent growing up. Um, after a couple of years there, then we moved to Indonesia. After a couple of years after that, we moved to Taiwan. And that's, I think, really where I, I guess I have my accent. So I went to an international school. Um, so I was there for four years. Um, I went to an American school. Um, and then eventually went back to the Philippines for about six years. Um, and that was, I, I guess we, uh, we call it like elementary school and then middle school. Mm -hmm. So kindergarten all the way up until grade six i don't know uh grade grade nine i think all the way up to grade nine um and then eventually made uh, made our way in 2000 january of 2000 uh to, to australia and sydney and i think that's really kind of where i got exposed to a lot more art forms and really started being interested in film and movies and cartoons um like i uh, Growing up, I watched so much TV, so much cartoons as well. I think that's uh, watching the TV and like watching things has never really left my life. It's always been a presence, mm -hmm. as well as music. There's always music around the house all the time. So like Michael Jackson, like Earth, Wind and Fire, like all these different, um, like really soulful kind of music. Uh, then my dad's side, they have like a, they grew up like listening to rock as well. So I've been exposed to so much music as well. So okay. all different kinds yeah. of things. Yeah. Like and and styles. I guess like music is so, uh, so close with my animation because I think the way I animate is so rhythmical. And I think that's helped with the way I animate. Mm. So I, I can touch upon that as well because like I've been a DJ for longer than a, being an animator. Oh really? Ooh. I'm also I'm also I'm also a music producer. <laughs> so there are a lot of things that kind of like go hand in hand with animation. And I think that that's something I can talk about, which has helped me in in my journey in, into animation, which is how do you rhythmically find interesting timing so that your animation is not so same 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 mm -hmm. same same. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I grew up with a lot of like cartoons. I grew up with, like Dragon Ball. I, I grew up with like a lot of like Japanese robot anime. Um, I mean, my hair is long purely because like I wanted to be Samurai Jack. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but um, I remember when I was young, like my brother and I, we'd watch a whole bunch of like TV just for hours on end. And there was this one show that would come up for like 
10 minutes between different like I think movies on HBO called Movie Magic. And it was just kind of like 10 minutes worth of like behind the scenes back in like, oh my gosh, 1992 or like 91 about like how movies are made. So they talked about how the, how um, like Island did, I think the, the abyss creature like in the water, how they did the stop motion of like the Terminator, the T-1000, T mm -hmm. um, how they integrated uh, the, um, the chandelier person in like young Sherlock Holmes. And then eventually uh, how they blended between like CG stop motion and camera tricks for, 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 for Jurassic Park. So um, a lot of my biggest influence was definitely like Toy Story for, for, for CG animation, oh, yeah. Jurassic Park for, for the, for the T-Rex and the Raptors, Star Wars, just because of everything. <laughs> <That's what laughs> <was really good. laughs> um, and then I think, yeah, Samurai Jack and the Iron Giant, those cartoons and like Akira and like Ninja Scroll and like those kind of Japanese anime. Like those kind of like R-rated, really heavy kind of stuff that like stuff I should have never watched when I was young. <laughs> uh, I grew up with all of that, and um, yeah, it, it's stuff that I guess my parents just allowed us, my brother and I, to watch growing up, just so we were never really bored and just doing things. I think I, I just soaked it all up, and it just kind of added yeah. over the years into something that eventually ended up becoming me going into film school when did and, you go into, yeah. into film school yeah okay cool so let me rewind a little bit so like i can tell you kind of how it all go, led go. to that yeah. because uh, getting into animation was a whole bunch of projections and a whole bunch of like, situations that kind of never led anywhere and that i had to find a different way to get into animation mm -hmm. And then as well, like being a creative was also a different kind of avenue. So as I said before, um, I never thought I'd be an animator. I thought I'd be doing graphic design. I thought I'd be doing advertising and marketing. So uh, in, in Sydney, um, my degree was an IT degree. I did, an, uh, I, I did a Bachelor of IT with a major in game design slash 3D animation. <laughs> <laughs> And I think going to university was great because you kind of learn a little about like the soft skills of how to present, how to communicate with people, how do you talk with people. So um, you, you learn all the, like you learn very broadly kind of like your interests and kind of have a theoretical understanding of what creative life could be with a little bit of a slant of being very technical. So at the time I, I learned how to code. Um, I learned how to like build a computer and plug things in, in and then like learn HTML and a bit of flash. Hmm. And it was really only in the last year that we touched Houdini. Okay. I, and so I believe my first kind of thesis <laughs> animation project uh, was animated in Houdini. At the time, I don't think it, like it was, super interesting because you learn how to do particles you learn how to like explode things really easy i didn't know what i was doing <laughs> <laughs> i um i animated like oh my gosh i got like this free like if i can dig it up i'll send it to you but it was like this free uh, robot rig that we somehow kind of skinned i wrote the soundtrack to to the um uh, to the short film and just animated it fighting this robot okay. <laughs> or fighting this uh, this creature. Um, and at the end, it, it kind of matrix explodes and it was bad. <laughs> it was so bad. And the first um, things made with Udini, like everything, the first things we made with Udini is just, it's so magical when you see like, I want to make particles explode. I want to make just yeah. things blow yeah, like, up. Or, at the, and yeah, then... and at the time it was gray shaded. And I thought it was like, oh man, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> And then eventually we, we colored uh, my character like hot pink. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I think my character was like blue and red and stuff. And it was just Lambert and stuff. And it just, I'll take it up. Like whenever I, I, I show up to like juniors, I always say like, like we all had to start somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, all, we all had to start somewhere and like it sucked. Like 
Like a lot of like, like juniors reels now are absolutely amazing. I, I would not be hired now <laughs> if I ever showed like my first demo reel, <laughs> no way. So it, it goes to show like just how, how exposed we are now that the, now there's internet, now there's like online schools, now there's so much material of people like yourself spreading how to get into the industry like tutorials on how to animate what's a rig what's mm -hmm. you know how do, how does your how does your rig come in from like rigging or modeling and then how do you pass it on to the next department it, it used to be such a mystery <laughs> what animation was where it's like this magical place where like robots and elves make <laughs> magical things now pops out a movie um so I think it's really important um, what, what, what yourselves are doing to kind of almost thank demystify you, and make very human what we do. Because at the end of the day, we're, we're still just normal people. Yeah. Um, we're very interested in being creative. We're very interested in technology and putting that together um, in something that is meaningful, that is something emotional, that is something that you hope will last <laughs> beyond you. Um, and for me, I, I really enjoy educating people, like kind of explaining why I love animation, why I love this mm -hmm. art form and collaborating and meeting with really talented people. So I feel very blessed. I feel very fortunate to have traveled to as many places, uh, to met as many people as I have. Um, and just kind of looking at my LinkedIn, just the amount of studios I've been in. Yeah, we, we were <laughs> yesterday. Is it like it was show five more experiences and show five more experiences and show five. What? It's, no, no. you know, like it, it's, it's interesting because like, if you really look at the dates, I've been animating for about eight years. That's it. Because there were small contracts, it. right? Small contracts. Yep, yeah, exactly. And I, I think you'll, you'll almost get like two different paths, career animators, which is you have people who have been in the same company for 10, 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. And they're amazing what they do and they created amazing stuff and they this amazing body of work. And then you have me, which is you go from contract to contract to city to city to city. And that works really well for me because I've been so transit my whole life that I, I'd almost get kind of a little claustrophobic and anxious if I stayed in one place. So the, I don't think there's any right or wrong answer. I understand like some companies um are like so why do you why have you jumped around so much and my honest answer is i've moved around because i've gone where the opportunities are i've been flexible enough to to be open to life experiences i've been very open to culture uh and finding that next door to open which which would take me to the next really cool thing because uh, for me, like my whole thing has always been like, let me just try to just stay in <laughs> animation. <laughs> um, the dream was never, I feel like, let me get to Isla, let me get to Weta, let me get to, let me work on like a, like a, let me work on like Transformers, let me work on like a space movie or something. It's just been like, let me just stay in this thing. Let me just kind of like survive <laughs> and just kind of hang around <laughs> as long as I can. And then someone will be like, yeah, you can stay. You can, <laughs> you can, you can hang around longer. Like you, you you've paid your dues. Okay. Um, Which company, but I feel. Did, did it happen in any company that you, they, they told you, come on, let's stay, let's stay more. Because I'm seeing, for example, in the meal film, you went for mm -hmm. about more than a year. Yeah, you know, okay, honestly, like every single studio has been absolutely wonderful to me. Like, I can't say anything bad about any of the studios I've ever been in. Um, so I started off um, in TV. So I went to the Vancouver Film School here in Vancouver. Um, and I graduated and it's just allowed me to, to first get into TV. So getting into TV is a really interesting avenue because it teaches you one, learning how to manage your speed because it's so fast paced. So being instinctual with really good, strong posing, um, being able to go to jump between different styles of characters mm -hmm. and balancing just how fast paced it is has taught me so much in regards to how I manage my time and then just 
really, really good posing and being flexible enough to um, to manage it all. Because once you get into VFX, it's a little slower, but then obviously the quality of the way you polish is higher. Um, but everything I learned about constraints, about being efficient, learning how to talk to rigging, um, all really came from, from TV. Um, so I started off, yeah, as a TV animator, like cute and cuddly um, kids TV shows, which is my, if there was ever a dream, like I absolutely wanted to go to Pixar. Like, like I was, I had such an impression made on me um, from, from Toy Story. Mm -hmm. That was the, the film that like, I, I feel like most animators, there was always that one show that made you cry, that like made you feel something different. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was that, that and uh, the Iron Giant. Like, so uh, when I graduated from, from VFS, my, uh, I guess, student reel, it was definitely an ode uh, to that. So it was, it was a little girl and, uh, and an Iron Giant kind of character. And it was kind of a mishmash of the Iron Giant and um, in Monsters, Monsters Inc. Because like I really enjoyed that dynamic. So, um, uh, like I'll probably touch upon a, a few movies that kind of made an impression on me, and then how you eventually you learn to connect the dots on like you be, you're inspired by this, but then that propels you to something else onto the next thing, and it's your job to connect the dots. Oh yeah. Or those clues in what life is telling you, you know, maybe you should try this, maybe go that direction. Mm -hmm. Because look, what I found is it's you can't compare your journey to somebody else's journey, because that's their journey, that's their life. That's like you you need to you, you need to own the life that you're in, and then you do, need to own your own experience, and then that will propel you to some amazing, interesting things, and like that'll lead you to people, to, to culture. No, I'm just yeah. I'm just curious because you say before that you are also a music producer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I wanted to know: uh, Have you ever animated something on your own music? And if yeah. so, is more animation in tools or is completely different? It's something experimental. So, um, okay. So I, <laughs> I grew up. Uh, atypical with everyone who I grew up with in the sense of like, well, when everyone was listening to like hip hop and R&B, I was listening to hard tech on drum and bass. So I grew up with underground, like electronica. Um, so the, the stuff I like, I stuff I DJ, the stuff I like love to make is all the electronica. It's all electronic based or like fusions of different things. Um, so like, I love DJing like progressive house like or trance or like slow house or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and then drum and bass. Um, I really like, uh, like for me, like I love what, what Daft Punk have done. You know, like we as animators are very, very similar to them. And this, or like being an animator is the closest thing to be a, a Daft Punk or a Batman. <laughs> because like you have your, you know, you have your own life. And then you kind of put on this mask or guise as an animator and then you do cool things and no one will ever know what you look like. You get to act, you get to do some really cool things, and then you you somehow get to, to have your own life and then have your own interests. Which is why, like on LinkedIn, like I don't really show my face. Like if you never knew me, you'd never know what I look like. Like I prefer it that way, so it's my work that speaks for myself. Um, so at the moment, I'm Juno, which is um, something that I'm Alvaro, uh, and, and a whole bunch of us worked uh, together on in the uh, for like a uh, unreal project um and then for many many years i was a raptor so <laughs> very people very few people even in interviews like a lot of a lot of recruiters would never know what i look like until we, we do the interview um but yeah like so going back to your question about like have i ever written music yeah like sometimes what i do is i when i um have an idea of when when I want to edit my my demo reel. I do like scratch audio of really more the feeling of what of what and how I want to present my reel, and then eventually um, I then I could uh, switch it over to like a song that works or feels better that mm -hmm. is better edited. But for me. Uh, 
uh, music is a, just another way of conveying uh, better my emotional state of how I want to present my work. Uh, because 50% of watching something is also hearing the thing. And, and so if I can be in touch with the emotionality of how I want to present and like get you to feel something, let me get into the, the audio part of it and then let me get into the visual part of it. And it's almost as if let my visuals hopefully meet the emotional uh, mm -hmm. state. And then hopefully somewhere in there, you as the audience will feel something and hopefully connect them to the army. <laughs> uh, but I've always done it that way. Um, music was always my outlet um, to be creative. Um, I, I think for a lot of uh, creatives, I think boredom is something you're scared of. Like for me, I get really bored. Uh, I get really scared if I ever get bored because I, I know for me, for my personality, if if I ever start to start to get bored with something, I know I'll start having like, that's when depression comes. Mm -hmm. That's when you, you know, uh, you're in like a, as they call it, as they say, you get into a funk or you get into a state where it's like, mm, same, same kind of complacent, like, mm. Mm -hmm. and um, kind of being uncomfortable or finding the next challenge is I think the best way to grow as a person, grow as an artist like seek that un uncomfortability, seek the thing that makes you scared, uh, seek the thing that really scares you. Like, I have no idea how I'm gonna do this. And I think a lot of artists um, would probably say the same thing, which is seek uncomfortability, seek the thing that scares you, seek the next challenge that you don't quite know how you're gonna pull off. And somewhere in there, you find something in yourself and then you find mentors to lean on who can lead you towards doing it smarter, doing it better, doing it more efficiently. And then sometimes when you're kind of in the thick of it and you have no idea how to do it, I mean, that, that's really where you lean on people who have the experience and you have the expertise and have been there as well. Um, and then eventually you find yourself like when you look back at all your work, you're like, oh, it was okay. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like you never really get satisfied with your work. You look at back at your work, you're like, oh, yeah, oh, I could do so much better. Or I can, oh, what's the next thing? I want to prove myself again. Oh. I can be better. <laughs> what's, yeah. a, what's the thing that'll get me recognized? Or like, what's the thing that'll make people cry? I want people to cry. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get really, I want people to like crack their pads, scared. <laughs> like, or like you want to, yeah, you want to find that show that like wins the Oscar or like gets an Annie or, or something. And so there are different personal milestones that you, um, that you find and eventually it could get bigger. Or in my case, um, I started off with really, really big shows that were like, like um, how big and how broad your characters could be. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I suppose now that I've matured in my career and now that I start trying to finding out my way into what I think I do well. I, I found that I am more interested in the subtle, um, like the small, the, the very, um, very sensitive feeling, very quiet moments that I really enjoy, as well as facial animation. Those are things that I've found uh, interesting, which is nuance, Find, finding nuance in things instead of like big, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which which I love doing. It's it's, it's fun. It's great uh, because um, I really enjoy uh, shooting reference of myself, like in, inhabiting the, the character. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very beneficial to find and to do it yourself, but then maybe have the skill to know where to find the reference. Um, and now that there's YouTube, there's like a, a limitless, you know, uh, fountain of 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 resources to find um, mm -hmm. and to find reference. And then you need to use your imagination because you may not necessarily ever find the perfect reference, but it's learning to find a bit of this, a bit of that. Oh, what about this? What about that? And I think that's kind of where I find myself as a DJ really beneficial mm -hmm. or having been able to DJ because you're reading a crowd and then like 
sampling bits and pieces of things to tease people about and ref re literally reference what you found. It might be a callback to a movement of a different film. It might be a callback of, or alluding to something that might happen later down with your character. But I think it's really good to uh, see the bigger picture, understand where your character is going, and then make your moment count, make that shot count. Like every movement, every movement, every moment has a different story you want to tell to propel your character or your or the story somewhere. It, it needs to go somewhere or else your story will be very, very flat. Mm -hmm. And that creates zero emotion, zero connection uh, with, with the character. Because if, mm -hmm. if you mm -hmm. are able to achieve that, like I want to scare you and you're able to mm -hmm. scare me through what you did, yeah. then eventually you are really expressing your skills it's not about technical it's not about technical anymore it's about knowing the human knowing the the people and knowing how yeah. to scare them yeah it, it's almost like the case of almost the maturity of just holding back a little bit not showing everything in one shot like you really need to like take your time understand the genre yeah. if it is specifically like a thriller or a scary film know when know when to show your creature the jump scare or like no one to tease a little bit of the character, like maybe just a bit of a tail, a bit of a shadow. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's the audio to make it really scary. And then, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, I, I think as a junior, you're very eager to show everything. Mm -hmm. That's true. Because uh, it's like I want to show like how cool I can I can do this thing. And yeah, like I said, going back, I think it's a case of the maturity of knowing what to hold back and then when's the right time to then unload and, mm -hmm. and show the full extent. And I think one thing I could give advice or like let uh, juniors mm -hmm. uh, know that it's okay <laughs> is there's not one very specific way to animate. Everyone has a very different way of animating. Know the fundamentals, why you do that thing. Like, you know, good spacing, good timing, good weight. Yes. Know your principles of animation. But the way you feel your way, the way you, you animate your way and again, uh, and have your own process, each animator is different. Like, I animate radio. And so I learned this uh, from Michael McCarvitz, who is uh, the, um, the uh, Pixar animation supervisor. Um, so uh, I'll get back to that little story because <laughs> he he really inspired me and uh, another guy uh, Simon Allen um, uh, to to really kind of uh, really stick at it because there was a point in time where I got really disheartened and I was like oh, I don't think animation is for me mm -hmm. but radially basically means um, I first animate the hips just the hips that's all I animate that gives me timing and weight because I can't animate like a 2D animator, which is like on twos and stuff. Mm -hmm. I understand my movement through velocity. So it's basically a velocity pass. So I see the timing, I see the cadence, I see like my space, and I get that right. And then everything else is, is overlap. So everything else on top of that then, then flows after that. That's my way of understanding and seeing how my movement is. And then eventually, like, in all of that, in the timing, then I can hit my golden poses, make it strong, make it big, make it readable. And then layer on on top of that, then, like, it's just a little bit more weighty. So, like, if it's, like, my shoulder that beats, then I can do all of that. Or then then maybe if it's, like, an appendage or, like, hair or um, a tail, then I can animate all of, mm -hmm. like, all of, all of that stuff as well. Um, so, yeah, if there's anyone else who animates like that, that's how I animate. Like, I know there are golden poses that says, like, let's first animate this pose, and then a couple of frames there, that pose. And then eventually you can do like a two click, do a then do click, and then get to there. I don't understand that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, yes, I can do it. Like, if I really need to do it, that's the way I need to present. But I, I animate already like that. Mm. I inbuilt. I can build my timing. Um, and that's the way I see my timing, my spacing, my weight. Yeah. What do you think could be 
a path to find your own style. Yeah, that, that I think that's that's where experimentation comes in. I think in your own time, just playing around. Like what we do has to be fun. <laughs> like I, like if there's like how uh, ten rules of animation, I think the eleventh or thirteenth has to be have fun. <laughs> So when I say learn the, learn the fundamentals, the fundamentals is so that you are studio ready. Mm -hmm. You are ready to make somebody else's vision a reality because you are working in the surface of somebody else or a, a story's vision. So that's where learning the fundamentals will get you closer to that end result, which is tell the story, make a movie, make a short film, make a game. Um, in your own time, finding your style um, even within animating for somebody, it might be your calling card or your the thing that kind of shows up who you are might be a hand pose or maybe your timing or the way that, um, or even maybe certain shots that might come your way. You might be very, very good or you might have a natural ability to see quadruped animation or creature animation. Mm -hmm. So you might end up finding your way through that or like, oh, you know what? Their facial animation is really good. Let's start, let's, let's send them a few more shots and see what they get up to. Um, but like, imagine, like for me, I've, I, I still see myself as a character animator at heart. Like I really want to do the Pixar thing. I want to do the more acting stuff. I want to make people cry, you know? <laughs> like, um, so you may not necessarily get an opportunity in like a creature movie where it's all about really strong posing, like, scary locomotion mm -hmm. like really heavy shoulder stuff big broad stuff i can't make a, i can't make you as an audience cry with a robot <laughs> but maybe in my own time when you do get to do your own work you might find some really interesting really serious work a serious like audio piece that you mm -hmm. can put in your demo reel which then in your maybe your next studio might showcase when you show them your work Oh they're, inter oh, they're interested in, in facial animation. Oh, they're interested in something a little bit more serious. So your demo reel has to show that you understand the fundamentals. You understand like, yes, they can animate. First and foremost, you want the recruiter to be like, yes, they get it. They understand how to animate. And then sprinkled in between your shots, you might include personal work that might showcase where you want to see yourself mm -hmm. as an animator. And I think that is where you can put in bits of your personality, bits of where you see yourself further down the road, bits of your aspiration as well. And I think that that is really important. You need to show your personality. And then on top of that, I think soft skills, which is what, if you're so very, very lucky to get that interview, half of it has to be like, what's your personality like? Like, I know I, I come across as a really like nice guy, um, but like, I know I can be really serious because I, like, I love what I do and I get really, uh, really intense about <laughs> what I do. Um, but in the interview, you want the people who interview most likely a lead or like most likely a leader or one of the seniors. You want them to imagine like, I can work with you. I can be in the thick of crunch time and really enjoy my time with you. And I think that's maybe why I've stuck around for for this while and been to so many studios is because you meet so many amazing people you make wonderful contacts and you have to connect the dots that some somewhere down the road somebody who you sat beside might actually be the person that hires you later on down the road in your career so you've interviewed alvaro we met together at dmeg and then ilm i i, I think it was in effects i believe he would always come over near my desk and we'd, we connected because we'd always talk about short films that we wanted to do, like stories we wanted to tell. Mm -hmm. Further down the road, a couple of years, when I left London, we, we, he, he started, you know, Mayhem Mirror and then eventually I ended up being a supervisor to do Juna and then now Crete. Um, you've interviewed Juani. I sat beside Juani when we were working on Solo. <laughs> You know, eventually I was doing so, and then he eventually worked on uh, Jurassic World for, I believe, the second one, I believe. You get to meet so many amazing people, and 
for those that like you really connect with, really try to connect with them because you never know when they might be the one to recommend you for the next gig. Um, or they might eventually become the person who hires you. So I, uh, I was originally gonna go from London back here to Vancouver, uh, but another really good friend of mine, Hari, um, he uh, ended up being a lead at Mr. X here uh, over in Montreal, and he convinced me to come over to Montreal. So me moving to Montreal was never really part of the plan, but it allowed me to then become a lead. Mm -hmm. um, so for the last two years, I've been a lead and uh, I was really apprehensive and really scared about being a lead. I didn't think I was ready because like, I know I'm still so baby as an animator. Like I, like I, I imagined a lead being like someone who's been like there for like 10, 15 years and knows what they're doing. But opportunity came around and uh, I was like, you know, like, I, I feel like if I don't do it, I know I maybe regret not taking the chance to want to give back and then test yourself. And I, I know um, we, we talked a little about doing the scary thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, 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 I wrote it that down. is... <laughs> <laughs> like we, we, that, that we, we always write down a post-it <laughs> with one of the things <laughs> that yeah. Anandi says that is really impactful. And I said, seek the things that scare you. So we have, I your, think you have your quotation. Yeah, I, I think you, ha you, you have to because your bar is here, but then when you push yourself, you, you never really realize just how much you can do or your abilities until you're really tested. Um, I know it's really cliche, but like, you know, under pressure and a lot of agitation creates pearls, right? Or, or diamonds, as they say. Mm -hmm. Kind of true with people. Like you need to balance it so that you don't burn out. Burnout is a very real thing. Like being jaded is also another very real thing as well. So going back to your question, which is like finding your own style. I think you, when you take a break between contracts, between long periods of time where you just work, 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 and you never really stop. I think those are the times where you have to remind yourself why you love to animate, why you love to do this thing that you mm -hmm. do. Because you time something, you, you forget because you're working for somebody else. Like if your personality like me, which is, I take on the, <laughs> the emotionality of the director's vision, which is like, my feeling, my emotion is completely attached to that project. When coming out of a project, you have a crash. You forget some things who you are because your whole being is about that project. Which is why like my fallback has always been music. Um, production photography so I love street photography I love just walking around and... oh another thing like getting lost being scared those are two things that I feel really push you to open your mind open your heart and be open to new experiences mm -hmm. and start small just getting lost in your own city just finding things and finding uh, finding things that are interesting maybe not necessarily beautiful Sometimes it's grotesque, but you, as for me, especially for someone who wants to do another short film at some point, maybe be a director at some point, you train your eye with a camera because eventually if you want to get into CG or if you get shots that have full CG, it becomes second nature because like, I know what the camera is. I know how to operate a camera. So I've been very, very lucky to have full CG shots eventually where you might necessarily know was that camera tracked or was that the person that did it so if i did my job right you'd never know what what was what what really changed it for you from being an animator to becoming a lead <laughs> throwing up <laughs> 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 so uh, every single contract that just got gets bigger and bigger and bigger i literally throw up before i even start um, I think getting, getting over your ego, <laughs> putting your ego aside and just really in a weird way, surrendering to what people see you as mm -hmm. like, uh, I've had so many people be like, okay, you're, you're very nurturing and you're very, you're easy to talk to. I think that there's something there that you can kind of give back. Um, 
I feel the answer to your question is I've been very lucky to be surrounded with people who really believe in me. Um, I have been very lucky to be people who I have had really good conversations about what to do next. And I think that is so important to have really good mentors and really good people who can give you very good feedback, who are not always like, oh, that's you, you do really good work. You do really good work. But then what, how can I grow? What else can I do to improve myself? So always being hungry to ask what else can you do without having lip service of like, oh, you do really great work. But what else? <laughs> what else is there? What else can I do? So I think uh, really being okay with how other people see you as. Because all of those things that people say I was is never a bad thing. It's never a bad thing for, for people to say like, I feel you can go even higher, or right? I feel like you can give back and do other things, mm -hmm. maybe better. Or you, you might, I think you might be really good at helping other people like get to get to a certain level quicker. Uh, so I, I feel like you never really quite know the experience until you're right in the thick of it or you start. I think part of it is just having uh, trust in the process, trust in your abilities. Mm -hmm. And then you somehow find a way that something inside of you really kind of goes to that place that takes you to, to, to I guess, yeah, a, play, a, a new depth or a new height or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but you find somewhere to go that, okay, this is what I am now. I guess I have to own it. And like, it's kind of like saying like the jump from being a student to an actual animator as well. Mm -hmm. You need to own, like now you're an animator, now you are being paid to, to, tell, to tell stories professionally and to do this 3D thing that we do. So eventually you, you start getting over the fact that like, oh, I'm always a student to, okay, well, I, I'm in it now, like I need to own this. I am now an animator, I'm a professional working animator. Let me be professional, let me be someone who, uh, who, who now will grow and I hope I can, I can continue this. And then eventually, like, there's a point where you're like, no, I, I feel I'm doing good work. I, I want to be a mid. I really, really want to be a mid. Like, I can show, I prove it. I prove it that I can do all this work that, that you, I can do all the work you throw at me. So I, I feel like if you're ambitious enough and you, I guess you're humble enough to just keep doing just good hard work, you have some amazing opportunities that come the way that you never thought would come because other people recognize your hard work and I think that's also part of my job as a lead my part my job as a supervisor as well is to to be very supportive of people who who are as hungry as myself to to better themselves and to to like I can't wait for people to see what I see like I, I think that's part of the, my job as uh, as someone who wants to give back you might start seeing detail that maybe only a few people might be able to see in the moment. And if you can educate and if you can kind of explain the why you might do certain things, then you build up a whole team and you really want to, to keep a team. And that's how I feel you, you build a really good functioning machine to do all this really cool work that I don't know how to do, but we'll figure it out. And I think for you know if if there are leads who get the and, and i guess supervisors who also watch this i'm sure they'll they'll agree like you need to know your team you need to know the people because animation is a I, is a team sport <laughs> you're a team yes you can do really good hero stuff but animation works better in context so it works best in context because that's how you build a story like you, you need to see it in its totality to feel something. Because at the end of the day, we're in the entertainment industry. Are you entertained? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's true. Yeah, and I like to think like, if we are entertained in what we do, chances are somebody else might, it's somebody else somewhere in the world who you never meet, <laughs> that you'll never know, is entertained and really enjoys what you do. Um, I think the weirdest 
situation you ever find yourself as an animator is if you ever fly to somewhere and you're watching somebody else watch your movie that you've worked on and you know that they know you know that they will never know that the person who worked on the shot that they watch is right behind them that's a weird trippy feeling <laughs> and you're what 30,000 feet up in the air <laughs> um but yeah like as I said like I feel incredibly um very fortunate to do to to do and keep on doing this this thing I do. Like if I could um tell any juniors who do listen to this, don't lose hope. Be persistent. Um, I actually do have um, some show and tell. I actually have something I wanted to to, to show oh, yeah. any of the juniors who want to watch. But um, I don't know if you can see this. But um, yeah. So this is my visitor's pass to Pixar. Okay. It didn't have to be, but I, I feel like just being able to reach out. Um, there are amazing people in the industry who are very welcoming and very happy to give advice. So don't ever be afraid to, to just shoot an email. Say something on LinkedIn, why you want to connect. I think a lot of students are very shy about reaching out or very like, oh, I don't want to bother them. Like, I think I'm sure they're really, really busy. Yes. <laughs> Chances are, yes, we are busy, but we want to give back. We're just waiting for you to take the step because I don't know who you are. <laughs> like make yourself known. And however I can help when I find myself available and free, I'm sure I can help. So um, one of the movies I really enjoyed, um, was um, Monsters University. Okay. Um, I connect with that movie a lot because, spoiler, um, uh, like Mike and Sully end up not getting what they want. They end up in the mailroom, working for the mailroom. My first job was in the mailroom. I started off, you know, like putting mail, exactly what they did, just sorting out things. And maybe that taught me like just hard work. Maybe that taught me how to just be organized. But you can never be so big that at the end of the day, we're still very human. And you, you're just still, you know, <laughs> uh, you know a, a bunch of like DNA just on a computer, just doing this, basically. <laughs> um, but we've had the opportunity to do amazing things. Um, I got really inspired, um, kind of what you're doing here with all your, like, your videos with, with artists. Um, I got to do a lot of Pixar masterclasses when they were around in the city. So I got to meet um, Simon Allen. So Simon Allen was the Pixar animator, uh, an Australian uh, animator uh, who was, I, I believe, just visiting Sydney. And he was doing a Pixar masterclass when I was two years out of university. So I came out of university trying to be an animator. Rejection after rejection after rejection because I, my reel was so theoretical. I didn't have practical experience to show that I could animate. I could say like on paper, yes, I understand animation, but there wasn't a reel to back it up. So I was very, very disheartened after university, kind of, kind of getting lost. So I was doing retail. I was, I was working at a mall selling pillows and quilt covers. I was trying also being a to be a graphic designer, um, and that I guess my first real job creatively was being a graphic designer for a research company. Um, but somewhere in there, my my mom was like, "Hey, there's a Pixar animator coming and doing a class. Do you do you want to go?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Should I? I don't, I don't know. Should I?" Yeah, my, and like I really have to thank my parents because like, my parents were were so so uh, supportive. Um, and yeah, I went and uh, I was completely blown away by Simon and just be like, oh, that's how you animate. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, 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 I know nothing. <laughs> um, and it was a two-day two master class. And at the end, I was like, hey, look, Simon, like, can I visit you in San Francisco? Like, is there a way that I can visit you and just kind of like see what, what, what's happening? And he was like, yeah. <laughs> so I said like, okay. You do not expect. No. Yeah. What? what? 
Yeah, <laughs> like it, just ask. You never know. Like the answer will always be no one until, until you say something, right? That's true. So, yeah, I was like, look, in a year, you promise me, you promise me, in a year, I will go to San Francisco and I will visit you and we'll do lunch and I don't know, I'll see you animate or something. Yeah, and we kept in touch. And that this was 2009, I believe. I think 2009. Um, my dad was uh, flying to San Francisco for a conference for his work. And I'm like, hey, Simon, it's been a year. Like, I need to visit you. Can I visit you? Please, 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 please. Can I visit you? And he was like, yeah, man, just give me your name. Just walk up to the desk and just give me, give me your name. And, and I'll just show you around. And that's how I, yeah, like, I think that that's really a moment and a milestone where I'm like, okay, yes, I want to do this. Yes, I want to dedicate myself to this. And um, he showed me around. Um, and at the time, like, because I was so new, there are all these people who I met that, like, I didn't quite understand, like, like, who they were, but I met all these people. Later on, that I find out like, that was Andrew Stanton, that was, you know, this person, that was person, and then you realize, oh, you're the director of this, you're, you're the, that person. And I, I suppose, like, in hindsight, I just realized how much I didn't know about the people like I knew about the work that they did, but eventually I think it's really important to start really following the people and understand the people who work there. Um, so, you know, a couple of years go by and I save my, you know, my parents were really supportive and that's how we saved up enough money to go to PFS. Um, and while here in Vancouver, um, after graduating VFS, I was very, very lucky to be invited to go to Disney as well. And do like a one year, uh, well, one like a one day invitational sort of uh, field trip kind of. I think it was called the Inspire Day. Um, and at the time, they were just wrapping up Frozen, so I got to see the whole Let It Go sequence oh. six months before <laughs> it ever came out. And I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> so I, I found myself in just insane right time, right place, right person moments. Um, and like to this day, like I still credit all these amazing people. So Sam and Alan is one to just inspire me to, to get for the whole Pixar thing. Um, you know, uh, Colin, who was our animation teacher, um, put me forward to go to, to Disney. Um, and then another guy, uh, another two people who I have to thank is, uh, is another guy, Chris Buckley. Um, somehow he somehow trusted this junior animator <laughs> for TV and make this jump into VFX. So I went from cute and cuddly cartoon characters to raptors. I, I, like, I, I don't know how or why, but he, he trusted me to, to do that. And so that's how I ended up being a junior in VFX. Like, uh, yeah. Um, and, then, and then Aaron Gilman, like he's... Like, so Aaron Gilman, um, a long-time web animator, um, and then uh, Dean Egg, head of animation, uh, now, I think, CTO of Steamroller. Um, we work, uh, he, he was, uh, he's also an alumni uh, of uh, VFS, and I met him uh, as a student, and I hounded him with questions. <laughs> um, and eventually he just became a really good mentor and then eventually a very good friend and then eventually a colleague. So we worked together in London for, for Pacific Rim 2. And he's another person who, if I ever have questions about like, where's the next step or what, what's the next thing or what do you think I should do? He'd be another person to, to ask. And so I, I think for any junior um, who really wants to get further quickly, really find good mentors, really find people who you can lean on for good advice. And I think you'll find yourself getting very, very far, very, very quickly. So you don't do the mistakes or you find all the pitfalls to avoid mm -hmm. trying to find your way mm -hmm. through this, this industry as well, because there's never a straight line. It, it, it's very windy and you have highs, you have lows, you have 
points of self-confidence issues of like, oh, I don't think I can do this. I don't think I'm cut out for it. Yeah, and eventually you find a way or you have people to lean on who can inspire you, who can remind you of why you're in this. And then at the end of the day, it's about the people who you meet. It might be for a show that no one watches, but the experience was amazing. And then it might be this big movie that you were like, I nearly died working on that film. I'm glad people like it, but I don't know if I ever want to do that again. <laughs> a round of fast question for you, just to sure. get okay. uh, back to animation. Um, sure. It's just, I will ask you for one or two things and then you have to mm -hmm. decide. Is okay. the, the first one is uh, uh, laugh or cry? Twenty minutes. Oh, laugh. Laugh. I I love making people laugh, but to animate, cry. Okay. <laughs> cry. <laughs> <laughs> If people like I wrote down before, is nobody queue for a flat roller coaster? If you are not um, queuing for a flat roller coaster. What would you queue for? Oh, the Millennium Falcon. A Millennium Falcon. <laughs> like, okay. hands down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just a ride, <laughs> just a, a ride with Chewie. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Which I have done. <laughs> What? Oh, uh, uh, we need to know if we can know. Yeah, so um, my favorite show I've ever worked on was working on Solo, yeah. Star Wars Story. So I got to, oh, also maybe like a side note, um, as an animator, don't be scared of going in other directions to get into animation. So I got to do Previs for a little while. So Previs teaches you really good storytelling, timing, and then the overall feeling of a story. So when I was in Previs in London, I got to work on set for solo. So I got to Previs, got to meet the directors, meet some of the cast and crew, got to watch, Uh, and go on set, which is why I was able to walk onto the Millennium Falcon and actually flip the buttons and actually see the actual set and then go to ILM and final the movie. So that is very special to me because I got to previous, I got to be on set to watch it. Uh, I got to final it. And then I also got to kind of be in the movie. So I got to do a mocap as well for it. Animal or robot? <sighs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Just for the easy one, I guess. Yeah. It's too easy. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I can't do both, man. It's got to be both. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> An animal robot, like 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 Cheetor from like Beast Beast Wars. <laughs> well, this is back to Star Wars. Uh, I would mm -hmm. love to know how is uh, speaking with. Uh, I'm not sure if th this is the name in English, but uh, uh, how is speaking with the uh, C3 B8? With a robot. It's not a robot? I C3PO. So he's oh, oh no, I'm gonna get oh no. <laughs> He is a oh, I'm gonna get crucified for saying this. Um he is an <laughs> android. He's an android. <laughs> um but I didn't work on C3PO, I worked on BB8. Okay. Yeah. Um so I worked on The Last Jedi. Um And a lot of this, uh, so I worked on Stoke, I worked on BB-8, I worked on a lot of like lasers and a few spaceships. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it, it's, it, again, it, it's all a bit of a blur because like, when you get hired to level on, you get hired at ILM and the first show you get hired at ILM is Star Wars show. Okay, it's like your brain melts at the idea of How did I get here and how did they get so lucky to get both things? <laughs> um, to, to be honest, like to get into ILM, like I remember hounding the recruiter for a year. Like I'd email like, hey, hey, <laughs> hey, I'm here. <laughs> hey, I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm on set on a Star Wars movie. Hey, do you think you can, you can use me? Hey. And I remember when... I got the okay. I remember doing a ton of calls and I remember like I was, it was in the middle of winter. I was in the middle of a field with snow freezing my butt off. 
and negotiating like when can I do the interview hey have you heard anything have you heard anything I remember like when I heard like yeah let's do this I was originally hired meant to be hired as a tech animator for Transformers I didn't care what I was going to be like the fact that I can say like oh I, I'm going to ILM it was worth it and they're like oh we can we can only give you like a two and a half month contract if like let's just do this whatever like I'll make myself I don't know I'll, I'll make myself irreplaceable I don't know like I'll find a way it takes to stay there <laughs> um and shoot your shot like when opportunity comes like make the most out of it and on the first day I find out oh I'm actually on Star Wars and I'm like what <laughs> <laughs> so I you know I did I did all this research for watching all the Michael Bay stuff and like you know learning how to do all this heavy stuff and like trying to figure out how the parts would move and stuff and then I had to rewire my brain like oh no I have to watch all the Star Wars again <laughs> <laughs> um yeah for like as, as for junior like uh getting into studios that you want um kind of know what the studio does kind of be prepared do your research know kind of the show and ask like what show do you think you you put me on come prepared know know your material know the thing that you're going to be doing and then when you have information that might be interesting or, or, or um, productive for the show you might have some information you might have some knowledge about a character from whatever show that might aid in an acting choice and it might help later on be so much more impactful for what happens to the character like everyone's opinion and everyone's um uh i guess uh knowledge of something might add to something really interesting and i think as a lead and as a supervisor you have to be open to ideas um but then stay the course which is like what know what direction we're going mm -hmm. there's leeway for ideas but but we're, we're, we need to yeah. go this way but then but how can we have fun and how can we make it interesting on the way there and that's part of i guess the uh the responsibilities of someone who is more people managing and, and mm -hmm. show managing jay thank you very much for thank everything you. again yeah thank you so much as well it was a pleasure we get back to you on LinkedIn message everywhere. Yeah, please, yeah. For us, yeah, it's please, the yeah, start yeah. of a relationship. It's not just an interview. Of course, yeah, it doesn't end here for sure. Like, this industry is so small. So we will either work together, see each other, or do something. So. Yes, let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Have, Have a nice day. day. Yeah. Ciao. Bye -bye. Ciao. Ciao.